Hey there fellow project managers and enthusiasts, it's Dr. K and welcome to this quick tutorial on creating activity on Arrow project network diagrams. Chances are you may be familiar with an activity on known or AON network diagram, but not so much with its less popular sibling, the activity on Arrow or AOA network diagram. Well, allow me to make the introduction. An activity on Arrow network diagram as the name suggests, is one that uses arrows to represent activities and nodes to represent events or milestones. Let's see what that looks like when we compare an activity on arrow network to an activity on node network. As you can see, this particular project network has three activities, A, B, and C. In the first diagram, the activities are represented by the arrows while the nodes show where each activity starts and stops. In the second diagram, the activities are represented by the nodes, while the arrows show what activities come next. Now, let's complete an example where we create both network types from scratch. And voila, here is our network diagram table. This table tells us the activities, the precedents, or in other words, the activities that must be completed before the specified activity can start, and the duration, or how long the activity takes. Let's draw an activity on node diagram to represent this project. As we can see, both A and B do not have any precedence activities. So that tells us they are the starting activities of the project. C has both A and B as predecessors. D has only A as a predecessor. E has only B as a predecessor. And F has both C and D as predecessors. There are no more activities, so we can go ahead and connect F to a project end node. E does not have any activities after it, so we can go ahead and connect it to the end node as well. Let's add our durations. And presto, we have our completed activity on node network diagram. In a separate video, we will complete what is known as a critical path analysis on this network diagram so that we can calculate the length of the project and determine the earliest and latest times we can start and finish each activity without delaying the project. But for now, let's move on to our activity on arrow diagram. When drawing our activity on arrow network diagram, there are four main things to consider. One, each activity is represented by an arrow. Two, the length of the arrow can be used to represent the duration. Three, each activity starts and ends with a node. Four, we used dashed arrows to connect points that are logically connected, but not spatially connected. You'll see what that means when we draw our network. When drawing an activity on arrow network, I like to start off with a timeline. This helps me to visualize the length of each activity, which is a perk of activity on our diagrams that activity on node diagrams don't offer. Now that we have our timeline, let's start drawing. First, we draw our start node. We know A and B are the starting activities, so we draw arrows from the start node to represent both of them. Activity A is three days long. So using our timeline, we draw an arrow three days in length and terminate it with a node. We do the same for activity B, which is two days long. We know activity C relies on both A and B to be finished before it can start. Even though B ends at day two, activity C still has to wait until day three when activity A is finished before it can start. With that knowledge, we draw an arrow from A's terminating node to represent activity C. 
C has a duration of two days. So we represent that on the timeline by terminating the arrow at day five. Remember that in addition to A, B is also a predecessor of C. Despite this logical relationship, however, B and C are not close to each other in the diagram. We fix this by using the dashed arrow we spoke about earlier to connect B to the start of C. There, that's better. Now let's move on. Activity D only has A as a predecessor. So we draw an arrow from A's terminating node for a length of five days, which means activity D terminates at day eight on the timeline. Activity E only has B as a predecessor. So we draw an arrow from B's terminating node for a length of four days, which means activity E terminates at day six on the timeline. Activity F has both C and D as predecessors. While activity C ends on day five, activity D does not end until day eight, which means F has to wait until then to start. We draw the activity F arrow from the terminating node of activity D for a length of two days, which means it terminates at day 10. And like we did for B and C, we represent C and F's relationship with a dashed arrow. Since there are no more activities, F's terminating node is the overall project end node. Now let's look at activity E again. Since E does not have any activities after it, in other words, it has no successor activities, we also connect it to the project end node. Any idea what we use to do that? Hint, hint, E is logically connected to the end node, but not spatially connected. If you guess that dashed arrow, you are absolutely correct. And we're done. There you have your activity on arrow and activity on node diagrams. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up with more great project management content. What project management topic would you like me to cover next? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, this is Dr. K saying, keep calm and project on.